So what's the other way of exporting? Well, this is called bouncing. So if you go to your mixer and you look on your output one and two channels, under the mute button, you'll find a bounce button. So if we click the bounce button, we get a bigger, more complex dialog box. Um, this has more options because mostly this would be used for completing a whole song, bouncing all of the tracks together to make one output file. But very quickly, I'll just go through these options. PCM is uh, full bandwidth quality audio, so CD quality, as some people say. MP3 is a compressed format, probably the most popular compressed format. M4A or AAC is Apple's compressed audio format. And finally, you've got the burn format if you want to burn it directly to a CD. You've got the start and end points, which are in bars and beats. So um, this bounce will start on bar one, beat one, so on, and end on bar five, beat one, and so on. You've got a choice of real time or offline. Offline will bounce as fast as the computer will allow. So that's the same as we just did in the export option. And real time will bounce at the same track, the, the same speed the track is playing at. Uh, Normalize turns the loudest point up so it peaks at 0 dB and then brings all the rest of the audio up by the same amount. Um, I very, very, very rarely use Normalize. I find it pretty hard to actually think of a situation where it would be useful. Uh, it doesn't really get you release quality loudness, and it, yeah, I mean, it's just not that useful. Uh, maybe someone could email me if they know what Normalize is used for these days. It's just not a function I ever use. We then got file format, as we discussed earlier, but with the addition of CAF, which is a, an Apple compressed audio file format for recording in. Resolution, as we discussed earlier, 24-bit for me. Sample rate, um, another huge conversation. Maybe you want to have another day again. I tend to use 44.1K if I'm mixing pop or rock music because it's going to end up on a CD and CDs are 44.1K. Use 48K if I'm mixing for television or for video. Uh, they're the two most common ones. Higher sample rates give better quality. How much better quality is a hotly debated topic. Then you've got the file type, interleaved or split. Split will give you a left-hand file and a right-hand file, two files making one stereo file. Interleaved keeps the two locked together, so joined together. That's what I tend to use most of the time for this kind of thing. Dithering is a clever way of adding noise to put back some of the stuff you lose when you reduce from 32-bit to 24-bit or from 24-bit to 16. Again, in this example, because we're just actually working on the track, I'm not going to need the dithering because I want it to be 24-bit and we're not reducing from a higher quality. Add to audio bin, same as in the first example, very, very useful because we're going to be able to find out file again in a minute. Or if you're doing a complete bounce of a whole song, you've got the add to iTunes library, which is useful again for being able to find the file quickly and audition it. So I'm going to call this file drum loop 2. I think I've mentioned before, if you click on a file name, it'll take it up into the top there. And then I just need to delete the bit I don't want and add the number two so I can differentiate which files which. Um, and I'm just going to cancel that whole bounce because I've thought of something. Yes, I have got the MIDI muted and I've got the audio file playing and we want it the other way around. So I'm going to mute the audio file and have the MIDI playing. And with a bounce, anything you can hear playing becomes part of that bounce. So if I'd left both files unmuted, I'd have got the sound of the two files added together. By muting the audio version of the drum loop, I'm just going to get what we hear from the MIDI. So let's go back to bounce again. With a bit of luck, it's remembered most of our settings, which it has. So just rename that file, drum loop 2 again. And leave it on real time so you can actually watch it happen and hit bounce. Okay, so now if we open our media browser and look in the bin, we should have a file called drum loop 2, which is lovely. There it is. Now, because we had that loop up and because we asked it to bounce from the uh, bars and beats versions that we saw available to us in that dialog box, you'll notice I've got some space at the beginning here and some space at the end. You can easily get rid of that by just dragging them in or using the scissor tool to trim them. Uh, you're probably asking yourself why I left that space at the beginning and the end. Um, I would like to do the trimming myself. I don't like to let the computer do it. And this is particularly useful if you've got a reverb or a delay so that when the audio file or the MIDI file is finished playing, the delay or the reverb might hang over. And obviously you don't want it getting cut off at the end. You want it to play all the way to the end of the reverb or the delay so it decays all the way down naturally. So let's just have a listen to all three of those files. Um, I'll take that loop a bit tighter, just the two bars. And hopefully we should hear no difference between the three of them. So MIDI first.
mute the MIDI and this is the one from the file export option. And finally the one we bounced out using the master fader. Okay, so that is how you turn MIDI into audio. Uh, the next question becomes very quickly, why would you do that? Well, it enables you to edit, so if you wanted to reverse the MIDI file, you can't do it. But now we've got it as audio, we can hit functions and reverse it. And the other advantage we get is that our superior, which as I pointed out right at the beginning was taking up a huge chunk of RAM, can now be actually, let's uh, show you that working before we take it off again. Let's have a quick look at the CPU meter and I'll mute all the audio and just play the MIDI again. So that's using about a quarter of the CPU on my four core Mac. If we take superior out, we can now delete that whole channel just play the MIDI um, and just play the audio bounce version of it and if we look at our CPU meter this time you should see we've got almost no activity at all. Let's not play the backwards one, let's play the forwards one. So that's a good way of saving on CPU power if you've got a lot of virtual instruments in your track or if you're using some particularly heavy duty ones like uh, Omnisphere or uh, Drum Kit from Hell Superior like we were. So that's how you bounce MIDI to audio. Uh, I hope you found the tutorial useful. Uh, we'll have some more coming later in the week. Thanks a lot for watching.